we are taking uh, multiple choice questions on microprocessor what is microprocessor micro means small and processor means which takes certain input processes it and output certain thing for example 2 and 3 is coming the microprocessor if you want to add it will give you 5 if you want to subtract it has to give you negative 1 so when, whenever you see uh, a computer now the cabinet inside that there is a processor so here the answer all the answers has pld this word means programmable logical or logic device so the answer here is a microprocessor this is a multi purpose pld that accepts the binary data as the input it processes the data whichever instruction is instructing what to do and then it outputs which of the following is correct about 8086 microprocessor now you see the picture you can see 8086 also and there is an year also 1978 along with this intel is also written so this this is the intel 8086 this one is intel's first x86 that is first x86 processor and they launched intel launched the most powerful processor in terms of advanced architecture that is this 8086 processor in 1978 so it has a larger memory addressing capability and also a powerful instruction set so the answer here is intel's first x86 processor which of the following is a type of microprocessor so all of these types sys ris epic all are the type of microprocessor so sys is complex instruction set computer ris is a reduced instruction set computer epic is explicitly parallel instruction computing the microprocessor of a computer can operate on any information if it is present in dash only so if you see the formation there will be a processor in the central processing unit then it interacts with cache memory that interacts with ram and finally these the secondary storage which we call as ssd or your you know the hard drive so all the cpu will only access the data from the random access memory which is the volatile memory the stat the storage which is uh, the ssd etc they are the main the, they are the main storage so they are not they are non volatile so the answer see first of all the the other options program counter is a register 16 bit register which you see here flag they just give you whatever arithmetic logical uh, things are happening so it gives you the indication what has happened so secondary memory as i said it is not interacting with you main memory is the key so if the uh, information has to be in the primary storage otherwise if it is in the secondary storage the processor won't take it from there which of the following technology was used by intel to design its first 8 bit microprocessor so the first the answer here is the first one actually because it is being asked that intel to design its first 8 bit microprocessor and that is called pmos p channel metal oxide semiconductor so, NMOS, PMOS, CMOS, all these are the technology. So the PMOS, which is P-channel metal oxide semiconductor, this technology was used for designing the processor because this technology was slow but quite simple at that time. And then the you know, technology advanced and there were other things which came. Which of the following addressing method does the instruction move A, B, represent? C. First of all, there are different kind of addressing method. Addressing method is nothing but where the data will be, whether it is available right, right there or uh, in the register or in the memory. So this is the addressing mode. So the answer here is register indirect addressing mode. In the register indirect addressing mode, the address of the operand that is on which the opcode is going to operate is stored in the register. And since the instruction specifies that the register used to refer to the address is accessed indirectly, that is why. It represents the register indirect addressing mode. So we have register indirect addressing mode also and direct addressing mode also, which you see as the option B. So let us uh, just see here. This is the 
no of course this is the indirect addressing mode that is you won't have the data right uh, you will have the address of the data what is the word length of an 8 bit microprocessor so this is the first is the answer how does it come see the word length of 8 bit 8 bit is minimum so 8 bit is the minimum one how far it can go so at a time 8 bit cpu can process 8 bit of data and depending upon the type of micro computer the range word length range from from where go to six, this uh, 8 to 64 that is 2 to the power 8 8 to 64 in 8 bit microprocessor how many opcodes are there opcodes that is this is coming from the instruction the instruction is coming from the instruction set every microprocessor has certain instruction set okay so in 8 bit microprocessor we have how many see 8 means 2 to the power 8 is the highest level but here we have 256 every every operation has two parts an opcode part and the second part which is the operand part for example move a b so move first part is the instruction and second part is the data in an, in an 8 bit microprocessor maximum 2 raise 8 which is 256 opcodes these are possible but it consists only of 246 opcodes which of the following is not true about the address bus? Which is not true about the address bus. So let me show you here. See 21 to 28, one by one we are taking. 21, 28, it seems to be true. We'll talk about that. This second second option is it is a bidirectional bus. This is absolutely wrong because address bus is just unidirectional. Address bus, data bus, no, is um, bidirectional. It is bidirectional. And uh, this 21 to 28, it is true. And this uh, address bus is 16 bit in length. This is also true. From AD 0 till AD 15, this is address bus. So it is a it, it is 16 bits in length. The lower address bus lines AD 0 to AD 7, this is called the line number. So data bus in the microprocessor is bidirectional, but the address bus is unidirectional. unidirectional. AD0 to AD7 are the address lines that can be used for both address bus and the data bus together because they have the ALE and the latch will tell you address bus or data bus which is going to be used. So the answer is B. Which of the following is true about microprocessors? So microprocessor is an integrated circuit that contains all the functions of the central processing unit of a computer. So the answer here is true about. So the answer, the answer is C. It contains the ALU, arithmetic logical unit, CU, that is the control unit, and the registers. So the microprocessor don't have memory and interfacing circuit. You see here you have all the uh, other aspects. They follow the Princeton architecture and they contain the arithmetic logical unit, which we call it as a ALU, which you see also in the architecture of 8085 microprocessor. The control unit also uh, down below, and also the registers BCD, HL, WZ, all is there. Which of the following is the correct sequence of operations in a microprocessor? So whenever there is an instruction, an instruction contains of the, for example, we have LDA, certain operation. So there will be certain uh, fetching and there will be some storing and reading and writing. So what is the process? It means correct sequence. So fetch will be done, decoding will be done, then the execution and the storing. This is the whole instruction cycle which, which uh, is being followed for any kind of instruction. So what is the correct correct uh, sequence of operation? We have three. First of all, the because first thing is opcode, then operand comes. So opcode fetch will be done. Then the memory read and memory write will be done. And then the input output read and input output write will be done. So these are the this is the correct sequence of operation in a microprocessor. The die directive instructs the assembler to begin memory allocation. For a segment block code from the stated address. So in order, in order to begin this memory allocation, ORG will do. ORG, it's a, you can say a short form of origin. The answer is C here. So ORG means origin. ORG is used for specific addressing in microprocessor and the microcontroller programming. Uh, let us take an example. The location counter is actually initialized to 00x. For example, if ORG 0000H is there, this means we want to start our program 
from this address 0 0 0 0 n so whenever the org is right the assembler starts the location counter to keep track of the modules allocated or allotted address s or c that's why the d directive which is org so org is all about starting that origin which of the following is not a microprocessor now see they the answer will create a more question here because first of all p1 c1 this is a microcontroller it is a bit microcontroller but z8000 motorola 6809 xilog z8 these are all the microprocessor by the last one is the microcontroller so what is the difference between microprocessor and microcontroller Whenever you see a computer system, microprocessor, these are widely used in the computer system, laptops, etc. Microcontroller, they are widely used in the embedded system, like your washing machine, like your um, microwave oven. Microcontroller. So, this microprocessor it has only CPU in, in it. Microcontroller, it has CPU, fixed amount of RAM, ROM, and uh, there are other peripherals also embedded in it. So, random access memory, ROM is there. In microprocessor, we have to connect all the components externally. So externally means there will be peripheral device, so all the you know input, output, address, data, this is going to happen. While in microcontroller, you see all the components are internally connected in microcontroller, so the circuit is quite compact. So microprocessor, because of this reason, it consumes more power. And microcontroller, because of this reason, because everything is in, in one place, it consumes less power than the microprocessor. Microprocessor, it has very less internal register storage. For example, 8085, we have just DC, D, EHL, so it has to rely on external storage. So all the memory operations are carried out using memory-based external command, which results in high processing time. But because microcontroller has everything embedded, it has many registers also, so processing time is less. So this is the difference between a microprocessor and microcontroller. So these A, B, C options are microprocessor. The last one is the microcontroller. I hope you got the difference between. Which of the following is not a property of trap interrupt in microprocessor? Trap is an interrupt. Say when the system is working and you suddenly take out your pen drive, what will happen? How do the microprocessor will know? So there is there is there are certain devices which are connected, peripherals which are connected. So the microprocessor needs to know. So this comes through various interrupts. And one of the interrupt is trap. The trap has the highest priority. First of all, it is non-maskable. I'll tell you just now that this, the answer of this question is, which is, uh, the following is not a property. C is the, it uses edge triggered signal. Let me tell you first, that the trap is a non-maskable interrupt, that is, whatever is coming, when trap will come, microprocessor has to deal with it. That is, it cannot be disabled or ignored by the microprocessor. Others, RST 7.5 till INTR, they are maskable. They can be disabled, they can be ignored. And uh, this trap is a, it is a vectored interrupt. Highest priority, non maskable. But the third one, why it is wrong? Because the trap interrupt uses both level and edge triggered clock because it, it is of highest priority among all these interrupts which I showed you. Which of the following is a property of RST 7.5 interrupt? Okay. So these are the interrupts. And when we talk about processor, we have uh, the software interrupts and the hardware interrupts. Uh, the trap has the highest uh, priority. It is a non-maskable interrupt. That is when it comes, the processor has to handle it. And uh, they have different uh, signals, uh, leveled signals, edge right, triggered signals. Vector address is also there. So which of the following is a property of RST 7.5? This is being asked here. Now the answer here is D. It's vector, it is, it is a vectored address uh, and the address is 0034. So all these options, that is first of all, uh, RST 7.5 is a maskable interrupt. That means it can be delayed, it can be de disabled or ignored. The, the, the priority is second here. You see, this is the highest probability uh, priority trap. Then we have RST 7.5. It has the second priority, not the third priority. And its vector address is 0034. That is absolutely true. It uses the level uh, triggered signal. Actually, it uses only the edge triggered signal. Only edge triggered signal. The trap uses both of them. Which of the following flag is used to mask INTR interrupt? Okay. So when we talk about uh, the 
other aspect, when we talk about different flags, FRAP has the highest probability, uh, say, priority, sorry. And then we have INTR, the lowest one. We, we talk about flag when there are certain operations on the ALU. But whenever we talk about the interrupt, there is an interrupt flag. It's not here, but you see. I'm just, I just showed you because this is the basic flag we talk about. But we are talking about entirely different uh, kind of flag, interrupt flag. If the interrupt flag IF is 1, if this is said that it is, it is equal to 1, the microprocessor will serve any interrupt. The processor ignores the surface if the interrupt flag IF is set to 0. If it is equal to 0, then it is reset. Which of the following is a special purpose register of microprocessor? Okay. In any microprocessor, the instruction register, the accumulator and temporary register, these are general purpose registers. Because accumulator, whatever is happening will happen in accumulator and also saved in uh, accumulator by default. This is accumulator. Okay. Now the answer here is instruction register. Because the program counter is what? Program counter is different. Program counter holds the address of the next instruction which has to be executed. For example, if this is whole, these are the whole instruction which are in the assembly language. So if we are not working on this, PC will hold the address of the next one. Okay. This is 16 bit. Which of the following circuit is used as a special signal to deal multiplex the address bit, bus and data bus? Let me tell you the whole scenario first. From the whole 16 bit address or the 16 bit wire is from AD0 to AD15. This whole is the address bus. Okay. But the one part, AD0 lower part, AD0 to AD7, this also works as the data bus. Okay. Now, who is going to decide that? when this whole wire will be used, all the 16 bit will be used, that is it will be used as the address bus or the first 8 bit will be used, that is only it will be used as the data bus. For that we have the address latch enable. So address latch enable is a positive pulse and it is generated whenever the microprocessor starts an operation to latch the lower order address lines AD7 to AD0, call it as AD0 to AD7. Because ALE address latch enable it indicates that the bits on AD0 to AD7 are the address bits. Okay. Then this signal is used to lag the lower address uh, from the multiplex bus and generate a separate set of 8 address lines which is the A0 to A7. So this is just like a latch which you use. Sometimes it will be used, this whole will be used as a data bus. Sometimes it will be used as the address bus depending upon the situation. Okay. How many flip flops are there in flag register of 885 microprocessor? So we have the 8 bit register for depicting or showing the flags. So how many flip flops are there in flag register? See, flip flop, one flip flop will have one bit. When we take 8 flip flop, we, we start calling it as a, as a register. So all of these uh, 8 bit are not used because these are flag register. The B1, uh, B3, and B5 is not used. So if 3 is not used from 8 bit, how many are there? 5 is there. So there are five flags or flip flops in a flag register in 885 microprocessor that shows the status for the mathematical logical uh, operation. They are mainly affected by the content of mainly, I am saying, not always, but mainly by the accumulator. Which of the following flag condition is used for BCD arithmetic operations in microprocessor? BCD is a binary coded decimal and BCD, see, first of all, the answer here is uh, auxiliary carry flag. But in order to understand the answer of the question, we need to understand auxiliary carry flag. For example, these are all the options. Parity flag will be one, even number of flags, even number of ones. So among all these five flag conditions in the microprocessor, the auxiliary carry flag we are talking about, the auxiliary carry flag is used internally for the binary coded decimal uh, BCD arithmetic operation. And based on this auxiliary flag, the instruction set doesn't contain the conditional jump operation. What does it mean? That we have 8 bits. So the smaller part, that is the nibble. So it 
this auxiliary carry flag is set when they, there is a carry out of lower level four part or lower four bits of the operator. So I'm not talking about whole eight than the carry. I'm talking about four that carries upon to the fifth one. That that sets the auxiliary carry flag. Whenever a non-maskable interrupt occurs in 8085 microprocessor, which of the following data line contains the data? Now interrupts are of two types. First is maskable, second is non-maskable. Non-maskable means they cannot be disabled or ignored. The microprocessor has to cater to it, has to handle it. Trap is one of that kind. And maskable can be ignored, it can be delayed. So the answer here is D because trap interrupt is a non-maskable interrupt and it has the highest priority among all. So when it happens, its a vectored address is 0024 which is in hexadecimal. This is placed where on the program counter. You know program counter always have the address of the next instruction to be executed. So this 0024 will be placed in the program counter and this 0024 is the lower address bus which is also acting as the data bus. As I told you, AD0 to AD15, this is the whole uh, the address bus and the 8-bit part is used for the data bus as well. So here the answer is 24H. What does a microprocessor understand after decoding op code, operation code? So any operation has two power. The parts are Op code and operand. Op code also has inside it means the microprocessor understand that what is the addressing mode and what data it is going to act, how the data will be accessed is the addressing mode and the data will be called as operand. Okay. Now, now the question is what does a microprocessor understand after decoding the operation code? So, for example, we have LDA, add, move, all these are instructions. So, to decode this op code, what do we get? So after decoding the operation code of the instruction, a microprocessor understands the length of the instruction, 1 by 2 by 3 by, and the total number of operations to be performed. Because there are different T state in instruction cycle, there is memory, memory write, memory read, fetch, all these are done. So the answer here for this particular question, what does a microprocessor understand is C, length of the instruction and the number of operations after decoding the operation code op code. How many address lines are present in 8086, 8086 microprocessor? See, this is not 8085, this is 8086. In 8085, we have 16 address lines. This is the answer is true, 16 for the 8085. But we are talking about the 8086 here. Okay. The difference is, you see this picture, this picture shows the 8086, so from AD0 to AD14 you see here and then we have AD15 till AD19, that means if we start with 0 and goes up, go up to 19, that is 20 address lines are there. So AD0 till AD19 we have. So how many address lines? 8086 microprocessor, though it is a 16 bit microprocessor. It uses 20 address lines and 16 data lines. 20 address lines, AD0 to AD90 and 16 of them are used also for the data lines. And you know whenever the data lines is talked about, that is the bit uh, processor side, 16 bit. Which of the following is not a status uh, flag in microprocessor? In microprocessor, we have different uh, flags. Uh, sometimes ALU operation is happening. Then what is the result, what is, uh, whether it is zero, whether carry is there, whether the sign has changed or sign is positive or negative. So this, these are different uh, flag register in an 8-bit flag register which has, which only use 5 bits. So answer here is the index flag because the overflow flag represent whether the result is out of scope or, or not, that it has spilled over or not. Is it has does the boundary it has out it is out of bound or not something extra has not come direction flag is used in string operations direction flag string operation like concatenation etc some part is taken and the interrupt flag is used for enabling 
and disabling. That is, it is used to enable the interrupts, IF flag, interrupt flag. Okay. So the answer here is D, index flag. Which of the following is not a condition flag? Not a condition flag. So again, I am telling you, these are all the flags. So these, all the flags which you see here in the diagram, they are called condition flag. Sometimes the result comes on zero. So zero flag will become one. And then we have sign flag, zero flag, auxiliary carry, parody, uh, carry flag. All these uh, are the conditions flag. Please remember certain ALU or uh, arithmetic logical operation, there will be some result. So all this you see are condition flag. The question is asking not a condition flag. Now the trap flag, the direction flag and the interrupt flag. These are all called the control flags. So this A trap flag, flag is a control flag. It is not a condition flag. So the answer will be A. It is not a condition flag. So trap is the answer. Which of the following register is not used in upward fetch operations? Not used in upward fetch operation. Okay. See. So any instruction will have two parts. The operation code opcode and the operand. Opcode and operand. So which of the following register is not used in upcode fetch operations? So flag op uh, register, this is not used in upcode fetch operation. Because this flag register is used to represent the, for example, some operation LDA is there. So this is used to represent the status of arithmetic and logic operation, which is performed after decoding the opcode. Once the opcode is decoded, then it is done. Okay. For fetching operation, flag won't be used. Once all things are done, then some operation is performed. Then these all the flags will be affected otherwise, or they are used. Otherwise, uh, fetching the opcode uh, would, would, though, though, though this program counter, the memory address register and memory data register, all these three, they will be the part of fetch, fetch operation, not the flag register. Okay. A memory connected to a microprocessor has 20 address lines and 16 data lines. What will be the memory capacity? So, uh, will you be able to do it? Okay. Let us, uh, let us see the solution. If you've got it uh, right, uh, congratulations. 20 address lines are there. So you have to address, that is 20 address lines. The addressing capability is simply 2 raised to the power this number of address lines. For example, 8 bit, 2 to the power 8, 16 bit, 2 to the power 16. The 20 address lines, we already found in 8085, it is 64K. Here it is 2 to the power 20. Now this 20 to 20 are the location, but every location, because it is given that it has 16 data lines, that means we are, we are talking about 2 bytes. Please remember, we are talking about not 16 data lines means 16 bit. 16 bit means 2 8 bits. 1 8 bit is 1 byte. So we are talking about 2 bytes. We are talking about 2 bytes, right? So here we have to multiply this 2 raised 20 with 2. In order to get the final answer. So we have to multiply this 2 raised 20. It is not the total answer. 2 raised 20. We need to multiply it with the 16 data line, lines. That is uh, 8 bit 8 bit 2 bytes. So this uh, 16 has come from 2 bytes. We are, we are going to address this 2 byte location. Because 220 into 2. And that is going to be 2 megabyte. And you know about 2 raised 10, 2 raised 10 is 1024, that is considered to be 1000. 1024, actually 1024 is 1 KB. Then 2 raised 10, 2 raised 10, because 2 raised 20 is 2 raised, 2 raised 10 into 2 raised 10. So 1 KB and then again 1000 is 1 MB. So we have a mega megabyte. So 2 megabyte is the answer. Two bytes each. Megabyte is there, so the answer are in megabyte. What is the word length of the Pentium two microprocessor? Now this is a random question because Pentium one can be asked, Pentium three can be asked. So you you must have certain idea about all these uh, Pentium processor. The answer is the Pentium two is a sixty four bit microprocessor. 
the 64 bit microprocessor it was introduced in 1997 and uh, the only thing 64 bit is representing is that it has 64 data lines so 7.5 7 .5 million 1 million is equal to 10 lakhs 7.5 million transistors were there and the word length was uh, 64 bit Which of the following is not true about 8085 microprocessor? Not true, we have to ask. So 8085 microprocessor, it is an 8-bit microprocessor, we know that. Initially, the microprocessor was launched and it was just uh, you know, a paradigm shift. After that, all the processors came. It has 40 pin, we know that it has 40 pin. It has 16 address lines, we also know that. Now comes here is PMOS. So not true is PMOS because the 8085 a microprocessor is manufactured using NMOS technology. PMOS technology were used in uh, 4004 microprocessors. So NMOS technology is somewhat faster than this PMOS technology. Which of the following is a non-vectored input? Non-vectored input. Let me give you the answer first then we'll talk about it. Please remember, the trap is always the highest priority. So we have this software input uh, interrupt and the hardware interrupt. Software interrupt is coming from the software itself, that is the program itself. Hardware is coming from the peripheral devices or the devices which are connected. So no, vectored and non-vectored means vectored means it has a proper address. Tap trap has to be handled. This RST 7.5 till 5.5 and INTR also. But this trap is the having the highest uh, priority. It is both edge and level triggered while the RST 6.5, RST 5.5 and INTR are level triggered. RST 7.5 are is edge triggered. Uh, the only trap is non-maskable, others are maskable. So the this column vectored, so every one is vectored except an INTR. So all the vectored have its address. See, the, the, the program counter will know where what address to be placed. But the INTR has a range of address. That is, any address can be taken from here. And that has to be provided by the, uh, the uh, external device. User will not uh, provide it. System will not provide it. It has to come from the external device. That is why it is a non-vectored input. If it, if it would have been, uh, say, RST 7.5, so it has a proper address, 003C. So trap, RST 7.5, 6.5 are vectored inputs. INTR, non-vectored. Which of the following is true? Which is true? So let us see what which are false. Which are false? Every instruction has two parts. Opcode and operand. We know that opcode it by itself is having the idea about the addressing board. Addressing board is all about the data to be found out. Of data is called as operand. Opcode is the the operation to be performed. So first one is true. That means the others have to be false. See, move BC is two byte instruction. Because there is no data present, it is just B, C. It is a one byte instruction. Since in MVI we have 98, that is one data is present, so it is a two byte instruction. So the B is incorrect because it is given two byte, but it is actually one byte. MVI is three byte given, but it is actually two byte, right? And maximum number of T states possible for the execution of an instruction is 16. See, the T state, most of the T state is taken by call. So if you see call, there are multiple things happening. Uh, 60 states for operation fetch and memory write, then two for the pushing uh, in onto the stack. Then we have memory read again for new value of PC fetch from memory. If you combine them, there are 18 T state for call operation. So it is 16 given. So that is why it is wrong. Which of the following addressing mode is used by 8085 microprocessor for array and list operations? See, whenever array and list operation comes, you just have to think about indexing. Because array is all about index, which place the data is stored. List is all about which place is data stored. So, array starts with zero. Then there has to be some indexing. That is, we have to start from here and then goes up, go up to which point. So, let me tell you about the answer. It is C index, as I just suggested, it is index. So this index addressing mode is used for array list operation. It uses a constant value 
and index register to execute the final instruction. That is why the answer is indexed. What is stored in the HL general purpose register? See, general register we have BC, DE, and HL. So, this is basically having the address of them H, 8 bit register, L, 8 bit register. But if you combine HL, they work as a 16 bit pair. pair. So, H and L are 6 bit general purpose register. They are used to store the address of the memory. And as I said, together, if you combine 8 bit, 8 bit, they will. Uh, they can store 16 bit address and the address of memory is the answer. If a 90 GB memory has to be connected to a microprocessor, minimum how many address lines are required? That means the address lines to the power something has to be somewhat equivalent to 90 GB. 90 GB, we have to see what are the numbers. So 90 GB lies and every number is of 2 to the power. So 2 to the power n is the main scenario here. Now see, 90 GB comes between the 64 GB and 128. This is all 2 to the power. So 90 GB is coming in between. Now, 64 GB is nothing but 2 to the power 36 bytes. If you compute it, it will be 2 to the power 36. This is this is a 64 GB. Now, in order to this, uh, just add one to the power. If you add 1 to the power, 2 to the power 37, that is 64 GB multiplied by 2, how it will be? That is going to be uh, higher than 64 and lesser than 90 GB. That is, we just have to add one more to the 36, that is 37 lines. If you want to connect a 90 GB memory to microprocessor, minimum 37 address lines are required. Which of the following is a software interrupt? See, there are two types of interrupt. Hardware interrupt and software interrupt. Hardware interrupt is coming from external signal. That is some hardware is giving interrupt. Software is a special instruction which is which comes up as a result of the software itself or the uh, language itself or the program itself. There are certain maskable interrupt that can be delayed or rejected or ignored. There are certain non-maskable interrupt that cannot be delayed or rejected. That is, a trap is a maskable interrupt, others are non-maskable. Well, trap is a non-maskable, others are maskable. Vector and non-vector. Now, vector means where the subroutine starts, the location. If the location is known, we call it as a vector. If we don't know the location, the address of the service routine needs to be supplied by uh, the a device, then we call it as non-vector. The answer here is D, D, RST5. Because software, hardware interrupt, there are difference. All these 5.5, 6.5, these are all hardware. Software is 5, 6, 7 like this. I'll just show you the whole series. But let me tell you, trap, INTR, RST 6.5 are the hardware interrupts. But the RST 5, this is a software interrupt. Okay. Let me give you an idea about so hardware and software interrupts. The hardware interrupt, these are used to handle the asynchronous events. That is, the, those which are not in, uh, they are not synchronous. They are happening uh, anytime. Both are happening anytime. Software interrupts cannot be used to handle asynchronous events. So hardware interrupts, they are requested by the peripheral device or the external device. The software de uh, the interrupts, they are requested by microprocessor itself. And through certain programs, certain code, certain instruction, is a software interrupt. Hardware interrupt, after execution of these interrupts, the program counter is not incremented because it is just a hardware interrupt. Okay. Once it is executed, it is not incremented. While the software interrupt, the after the execution of these interrupt, software program counter is actually incremented. So some hardware, some hardware interrupts, they are maskable, like we just saw 7.5, 6.5, etc. Software interrupt, all the software interrupts are non-maskable. Though they have high priority, please remember, software interrupts have higher priority than hardware interrupts, but all the software interrupts are non-maskable. While hardware interrupts, some, some hardware interrupts are maskable. But they have lower lower priority as compared to the software interrupt. And as I said, the hardware interrupt it improves the throughput because it, the uh, devices are giving the instruction or the interrupts. Software interrupt they uh, they don't improve the throughput because the microprocessor will be busy in handling that again and again. And as I said, that this will definitely affect the uh, interrupt uh, log control logic. Hardware interrupt. The software interrupt won't. Uh, this will not affect the interrupt control logic. So let me give you an example of hardware interrupt trap RST 7.5, 6.5, 5.5, INTR. These are all hardware interrupts. And RST 1 till 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 
these are all software interrupts what is the vectored address of rst5 so these are the address rst0 till rst7 and these are all these software interrupts the answer is c and i'll tell you how to find this because there is a proper formula here the vectored address of rst from 0 to 7 that is we can call it as rst n n can be from 0 to 7 it will be n into 8 that is if rst 5 we have to calculate in place of n put 5 5 is a 40 and this is the decimal form so you have to change it into into hexadecimal that will be 28 in hexadecimal this is how you uh, find out which of the following is true about stack pointer okay the answer here is the stack pointer contains the address of the top top of the stack memory so whenever there you are doing some programming etc there will be a ram uh, stack in the ram so that will be allocated to you so there will be a stack pointer there will be a stack initialization so the stack pointer is a 16 bit register that will store the data temporarily for example if uh, you are running certain program and there is a subroutine so when you go to the subroutine you have to have the next address the next address in, uh, instruction address to be placed somewhere so that you can recall it when you come back to the main program and that is going that is only possible when you have stack like operation the stack pointer is uh, the is initialized before the stack operation and store the data not permanently only you know temporarily and stack pointer is initialized before the stack operation the stack pointer is 16 bit so it has to be initialized before stack operation not after the stack operation otherwise it may not have any use how many address lines are required to connect a 4 kb ram to a microprocessor so always remember the memory is 2 to the power 2 raised So we have four KB. So one K is what in memory terms one zero two four. So one zero two four is nothing but two to the power ten, and four is two to the power two. So two to the power twelve, which is going to be uh, two to the power ten. This is this is two to the power two. So it is going to be two to the power twelve. Four zero nine six. So these are twelve address lines. Which of the following is true about move A comma B instruction? Okay, see move. What what all is there? First, let me tell you one by one. First is it doesn't affect the flag register. This is your answer. It doesn't affect the flag register because move is doing what? If you have a location, one source, one destination. From source, it goes to the destination. The content is only copied. It is only copied. So there will be no change in the flag register. it is not a two byte instruction but it is because move is one byte instruction it means move the content content of register a to b no it means moving the content of content from register b to a not a to b that is why this is also wrong it uses immediate addressing mode no it uses the register addressing mode so the only answer is c all others are incorrect which of the following is false about lda instruction see lda is load accumulator direct load accumulator direct right so this is the full form now this is a direct addressing mode instruction so it uses indirect addressing mode that is going to be false because lda is a direct addressing mode because after that the address is directly given in the instruction lda 2000h so 2000 is already given it is direct addressing mode and then it is it is actually three byte instruction that is correct it has uh, or it uses 13t states that is also correct and it doesn't affect any flags that is also very true so only the false option is it uses indirect because it actually uses the direct addressing mode right like if you load accumulator directly means you are loading accumulator directly to this you know wherever this address is pointing the data on this address will be loaded to the accumulator 
which of the following is true about STA instruction? So STA instruction is store accumulator direct. The answer is it is a three byte instruction. Store accumulator direct. It is a three byte instruction that is correct. Now what all are incorrect? It uses immediate addressing mode. No, it uses direct addressing mode because the address is directly given after ST. Three byte yes. It requires three machine uh, cycles. No, it uses four machine cycles. Accumulator is loaded with the content of memory. No, in ST instruction memory is loaded with the content of the accumulator, not the content of the memory. Okay. This is this is uh, also incorrect because STI instruction memory is loaded with the content of the accumulator. DAA instruction is used to perform which type of addition? The DAA is simply decimal adjust accumulator. So the answer here is it's a BCD addition. This DAA instruction is used to perform the binary coded decimal addition. And the DAA instruction changes the binary values of the contents of the accumulator to what? To the binary coded decimal. You see also in the exam example, uh, I've tried to show it. Okay, you can just go through it. But the answer here is A, BCD addition. What does a loader do in a microprocessor? What is the loader doing in the microprocessor? Loader does everywhere loader does the same thing because microprocessor or any computing device it only understands zeros and one that is binary. So loader does what it first converts the hexadecimal code to the binary form and then loads it to the memory. Let me tell you again loader task is to convert hexadecimal code that is the H form into the binary zero one form and then loads it to the memory. So the answer is converts hexadecimal code to binary. Suppose registers A and B contains 50H and 40H respectively. After instruction move AB, what will be the contents of register A and B? The move is what? A comma B. So the content of B will be transferred to the content of A from source to destination. But the A will have the content of B but B won't change. B until you replace it, if A is having 50, B is having 40, when you transfer, when you move, now A will have 40, B will itself have 40 because it was having 40 until it is not being replaced. So the answer will be 40, 40. So that will be A. So A and B both will contain 40, 40. For how many times for instruction, the content of the program counter is placed on the address bus? Now this is a very tricky question because the answer we cannot give. It depends on the length of the instruction. Whenever we decode an opcode, the microprocessor understands then what is the length of the instruction. 1 byte, 2 byte, 3 byte, what have to be performed, how many fetch, how many are e state, how many operations, how many instruction cycles. So the content of the program counter is placed on the address bus. It may be as many times as the length of the instruction. So we cannot tell it right now. It depends totally on the length of the instruction. Conditional instructions are independent of which of the following flag. So these are all flag. You know these all flag we have already discussed. So the answer here is auxiliary carry. Because conditional instructions they are Branching instructions. Branching that is jump, jump dot zero. For example, if you know something about C, C, Java, if else, while, do, while, all these are branching instructions. So here we, which we are talking about the conditional instructions, they are branching instructions. The looping may go or you may go somewhere else like that. So in this group, the program control is transferred from one location to another conditionally. So they depend on the status of the flag affected for, for previous ALU operations except the what auxiliary carry. Which of the following is not correct about halt instruction? Now the name itself is halt. That is stopping. It is already saying stop. So the answer, what is the answer? Not correct about halt. What is not correct? The answer is B. 
it is used to start the execution of the program actually it is not correct because halt means stopping halt is a machine control statement internally what is being done is the pc is disconnected from the address bus for example so the next fetch won't be possible that is used mainly to stop the execution of the program okay so it does not affect the content of the register and flags once the processor is halted it can be brought to the normal mode only by the resetting the processor so halt is used as a last instruction in every assembly language program halt the instruction stops the processor okay so the 885 repeats the fetch record execution cycle until it is deliberately st uh, stop which is done by halt hlt is the option when data required for instruction is present inside the register of a microprocessor then which of the following addressing mode is used the question is also answering the the actually option because register addressing mode is used when the data is present inside the register of the microprocessor for example move b c b and c are the registers of the microprocessor so the answer itself is the register that if there are different types of addressing mode a bda direct register register indirect and implied which of the following interfacing ic integrated circuit is a dma controller dma is is directly direct memory access okay the answer is c let me tell you because it is very specific it doesn't have any you know explanation like that so the 8257d7 is the answer 8155 is a multi purpose programmable input output device 825354 is a programmable counter 8279 is a keyboard display controller and this 825737 is a dma controller so the answer will be a which of the following is a two word instruction set two word instruction set answer is c in01h the first one lda2500h and these jmp2085 because the direct address is given it is a three word instruction all the memory address is given that is why it is a three word instruction move ab is a one word instruction though they, there is no data only a and b is given so in01 h this is a two word instruction what is this this the first byte is specifying the opcode which is in here and the second byte which is 01 it will specify the operand which of the following is a register indirect addressing mode instruction set so the answer is d here actually it's ldax ldax now this l the first one if you see lda2700 let me tell you one by one this is a direct addressing mode instruction because 2700 is already given adi 36h because 36 is the data is an immediate addressing mode instruction daa is an implicit addressing mode because nothing is given and ldax b is a register indirect addressing mode instruction which of the following is true about sphl instruction now sphl sp is for stack pointer hl is for hl general purpose register the answer is content of hl pair is moved to sp now if you remember b c d e h l there were these these uh, register pairs we talked about so sphl is basically a one byte instruction it uses register addressing mode it is using register addressing mode it requires 60 states and uh, it is a 3 byte no it is 1 byte and 6 key states it use it means moving the contents of hl pair to the sp that is the stack pointer hl to stack pointer okay so this is all about the these questions thank you so much